Hello, welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon. That was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 13, titled The Cell Within. Quality name for an episode, by the way. So far this season, it's been kind of hit and miss on, on names. This one? Perfect. <laughs> Spot on to the episode. <laughs> Definitely made me think of like, the Jennifer Lopez, The Cell movie. Mm-hmm. Definitely a plus. It originally premiered on March 10th, 1989. It is written by Jack Richardson, who also wrote Honor Among Thieves. Eh, he's got one more coming. <laughs> it's a glowing review. Was it you. written eh. by L.M. Kit Carson? <laughs> no. And it is directed by Michael Hogan, who wrote French Twist. Oh. This is the only episode that he directed. Mm. Well, <laughs> good for <laughs> him. <laughs> He tried. He did so a the, thing. The people that wrote and directed this also did Honor Among Thieves and French Twist. So you <laughs> put those two together, you get <laughs> the cell within. <laughs> Before we can start, a check in soon between each other's lives. Pals, we want to wish you a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, a happy Festivus that happened just yesterday as this episode lands on Christmas Eve. So if you're spending some time on Christmas Day listening to us, we thank you so much for inviting us into your family on Christmas Day. We also would be remiss if we didn't mention, not Christmas, whatever. On December 15th was Don Johnson's 69th birthday. The important dates in this in this house. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look a day over 60. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. He looks phenomenal. I have a feeling he's turned 69 a few times, a few different (laughs) birthdays. He looks amazing. I'm just saying it. You look great, Don. Don't change a thing. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, we just want to wish everyone a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Festivus. Happy birthday to Don Johnson. Whatever it is that you're celebrating today, we want to hope that you have a very fantastic day. And that uh, we really appreciate you appreciating that day with us in your ears on that day. John, I am the most excited for this musical <laughs> guest. I mean, this is probably the second most excited I've been for music guests. And number one is Phil Collins. I cannot wait to hear about this one. What do you got for us this week? You know, I can't help you. There was no music. It's amazing. <laughs> no music. No. Okay. There was music. Vice is going to make me do about Yanni. <laughs> Yanni, whose real name is Giannis. <laughs> Sorry. Here's the Mollus. Giannis. 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 short for Giannis. I, t- I, when you said Giannis, I was totally expecting you to be like Giannis McYanni. <laughs> <laughs> so his song, Keys to Imagination, off the album, Keys to Imagination. Um. <laughs> Such little imagination. (laughs) Yanni is a Greek composer, keyboardist, pianist, and music producer. He's known for blending jazz, classical, soft rock, and world music in predominantly instrumental creations or works. He has at least 16 albums that have peaked at number one on the Billboard Top New Age. We're going to come back to that. He has two albums, Dare to Dream and In My Time, that both got Grammy nominations. Lots of success for music without words. (laughs) Says the person who loves blues. Yeah. I love blues. I love jazz. Um, We're... Don't worry. We're going to talk about it. We'll get to it. Okay, so some of the feats that Yanni has done. He's performed in over 30 countries. He's performed at numerous historical sites, including the Taj Mahal, the Great Sphinx of Giza, and a bunch of others. He's used that as, like, concert tours. He will do a big-ass concert at, like, the Taj Mahal. And, you know, they don't let, like, everybody just play at the Taj Mahal. One of the few people to play there, they'll film it, and then they'll sell the DVDs. And because of that, he has over 40 platinum or gold albums, sales totaling over $25 million. So, my question to you guys. I never met anybody who has ever paid money for a Yanni CD. <laughs> you or anyone you know ever paid money for a Yanni CD? Because I have a theory here. I do. I have one person that I know. It was a um, ex-girlfriend, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. outing myself. <laughs> a high school girlfriend of mine. Her parents loved yanni and um mm. i would go over to their house all the time and they would there'd be like a yanni concert on tv and she the the mom in particular really loved yanni and so i became quite familiar 
with Yanni while being over at that house. And she paid real money for it. And I thought it was quite hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> what about you, Melissa? Yes, One that I was have, a Yanni fan? I have an aunt that likes Yanni. My Aunt Christina likes Yanni. Whoa, curveball. Okay. Because he dated, because of who he dated. She liked Dynasty. And so mm. and he dated Linda Gray. And but, so But that doesn't did she actually own any of the music or did she just like that guy that Linda Evans dated? No, I think she owned <laughs> I think she owned his music because she, I mean, I don't know who bought it for, but she had it she did have a CD or whatever at the yeah, time. Yeah, and so we're the- we're not a hundred percent so we've got two people out of everybody we know, and one of them could have bought it, but might not have. <laughs> might, okay. She might have got it as a gift. She how many for- elevators? <laughs> how many elevators do you think there are in the United States? <laughs> One hundred seven thousand. We have no way uh, to yeah. verify that. <laughs> <laughs> At least, if not way more than that. Okay, so if we're talking, the last time I heard Johnny was either in an elevator or a mall or an office building. <laughs> so if we add up every mall office building or elevator mm. that, that's a lot of cd sales right there solid point solid point you think about how that many might album just sales total over. 25 million dollars mm-hmm. and maybe get you 40 gold albums you know, and so I, i've got to be honest that might total 24 million dollars and then a million dollars of people like your your ex-girlfriend's mom who yeah. actually were dumb enough to pay <laughs> there's a solid point on that like for business use and how much in sales that that shit generates because there's some feeling in the streaming like the Netflix world now that there's a bunch of shows that are being kept alive and they just see like how many times it's being streamed but it's because a doctor's office is playing the same turbo episode a thousand times a day and so it makes mm-hmm. it out of whack like like for music they're listening to Spotify and they listen to like this office safe playlist and it's getting all these streams, but no one's actually paying attention to it. Very true. And I know how mm-hmm. many elevators are operating in the United States. I just looked it up. <laughs> 900,000 oh, yeah. elevators Damn. operating in the United States right now. So if every See? if every building had it, that has an elevator has a copy of Yanni, that's almost makes it platinum. Exactly. Exactly. See? And to support that even more, his music has been used in a crap load of commercials for sporting events like the Super Bowl and the Olympics, as well as award shows. Do you, any of you guys remember Yanni performing at an award show? No, because he didn't perform at an <laughs> award show because they played his music when they wanted the person accepting the award to shut up and get off stage. <laughs> Just to defend my, so, ex, my ex-girlfriend's mom. Just to put it in perspective, uh, I should that, say. Maybe you should back your... <laughs> What is your perspective? I, say? I think I've just proven that Yanni's made up of selling CDs to <laughs> dentist office. Yeah, I think so. She also owned like every chicken soup for the soul book and had a Beanie Baby collection and can do the Macarena. <laughs> so if you just take everything in the 90s and just roll it up into one old person, <laughs> like the late 30s, <laughs> early 40s person in the 90s, that's her. That might be the whitest person I've ever heard of. <laughs> Beanie Babies, Chicken Soup for the Soul, and Yanni. She buys her mayonnaise at Costco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just one of the big tubs with just a spout on it. That you just... Oh, God. <laughs> Gross. All right, all right. Getting back to Giannis. Giannis was a gifted child, picked up piano by the age of six, and is said to be self-taught. Uh, he actually even to this day, uses his own shorthand rather than tr- traditional music notation. So what that tells me is that Yanni can't actually read music, and he has some made-up symbols he uses. <laughs> he had to make up which would be, <laughs> It must be super hard to be in, like, Yanni's band. It's like, like heart stars are random. Are, are these lucky charm symbols? What the hell am I supposed <laughs> to play, Yanni? Okay. Uh, by the way, not only a talented mist as a child, at the age of 14, he set a Greek national record in the 50-meter freestyle swimming competition, which I guess there's just one Greece, and if a 14-year-old can win it, I don't think that they're very good at it. And by 1972, when he was about 18 years old, he moved to the U.S. And of all places in the U.S., 
he moved to Minnesota to to attend the University of Minnesota. <laughs> in 1973, he was majoring in psychology. He'd actually receive a bachelor's associate in psychology in 1976 from the University of Minnesota. Rather than use his bachelor's in psychology, in 77, he would join a rock band called Chameleon. Now, Chameleon would would tour, and uh, at the same time as he would tour with Chameleon, he would also contribute to the Minnesota Dance Theater. Uh, He'd provide music for them, and they would, in turn, tour with them, with Chameleon. And this would be into the early 80s. Most of all, he would meet drummer Charlie Adams, who was the founder of Chameleon. And that would be important, because Charlie Adams would be his drummer until at least 2010. Like they would continue working together. And this is when Yanni started to posse up. So we're getting into the 80s. Yanni decides, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to pursue movie soundtracks. He would do his first, record his first couple albums with Atlantic. And by the late 80s, 87, he would form a band with fellow pianist, singer, and local DJ John Tesh. Everybody. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, mer- the merging. Oh my God. Yes. And so we would have a band, John Tesh, Yanni, and Charlie Adams on drums. And they would begin touring in 1988 and releasing albums, including Keys to Imagination. <laughs> Other than Keys to Imagination, the least imaginative uh, album name, <laughs> he, he, they would also release Out of Silence and Chameleon Days. And during this time, Yanni would start his career writing soundtracks for movies. I'm going to name you all, all these different movies because it was like, all these are like within two years of each other. He wrote the soundtracks to all these movies. You tell me which is your favorite. Steal the Sky in 1988. Heart of Madness in 88. I Love You Perfectly in 89. She'll Take Romance in 90. When You Remember Me 90. As well as Children of the Bride in 90. And then in 94, How a Q Shaolin is the oddball <laughs> of the group. <laughs> well, I don't know, John. It's really hard to say because I really appreciate all Harm- Hallmark Channel movies. And it's hard for me to choose just one. <laughs> so I just have to say, I hope that all those women found what they were looking for. <laughs> I will say you are pretty damn close because I, I, I literally looked at a couple of these movies. And yeah, they're pretty much like straight to, to, straight to VHS or Betamax or whatever was going on at that time. <laughs> What was the name of that channel, huh? Melissa, before the Hallmark Channel? What was the one that showed all those movies and stuff? Which, not, I don't not know. We... Lifetime. Yeah, Lifetime. That's all I was trying to think yeah, of. Yeah, Lifetime. Sh- they still make Christmas movies, for the they record. They still exist. In fact, uh, the Lifetime and the Hallmark Channel are, are responsible for the uh, Property Brothers acting career. Oh, my God. <laughs> Believe it or not, they've done like 10 Hallmark movies oh, in a God, few Lifetimes. That's terrible. Oh, Which yeah. is worse, a Property Brothers movie oh, yeah. or a WWE movie? Oh, God. I I'm, I don't know. That's hey. pretty bad. I think Property Brothers. <laughs> Guys. Oh, no. No. Uh, I would I would totally want to see a Property Brothers movie because Jonathan is a former magician, <laughs> like legitimately, like he did that for a living. I'm, I'm scared. He, at he how did much magic you know before he started Brothers. acting. John, I'm worried about you. How, how, why do you know so hey, much about I Property have to Brothers? Do something to keep me awake in between researching Yanni. Okay. <laughs> Oh, the Property Brothers are more interesting than Yanni, okay? <laughs> All right, let, let, let's get to the end of this Yanni stuff, okay? So by the 90s, he's making crappy movie soundtracks. He's touring with John Tesh. He's making crappy music, selling, basically. <laughs> he's selling millions upon millions of albums to dentist office and shopping malls everywhere. How could life get any better? He was in People magazine in 1990. He showed up on Oprah with his girlfriend, Linda Evans. But apparently, people didn't know she was crazy at that point. The power of Ramtha, John. Do not underestimate She's the not power in- of Ramtha. She's not in Ramtha. <laughs> She's got her own. I'm not entirely that Yanni wasn't murdered in '92 and uh, replaced by <laughs> Ramtha. So they shoot apples off his head. <laughs> <laughs> for, for anyone so who's wondering, the, for anyone who's wondering what the hell we're talking about, there's a religion. Religion. They're they're interesting people. They 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 practice Ramtha. 
So wrap everything up. So, and by the way, guys, like when you're reading and I'm reading his Wikipedia page and the person who, who was writing it actually made a point to say like he, he was at his height of popularity showing up in People Magazine and on Oprah with li- his girlfriend, Linda Evans at the time. But people still mostly knew him as that guy that's dating Linda Evans. Like, no one really <laughs> knew him as, like, Yanni the mu- mu- musician. Like, he was just, hey, that's the guy that's dating Linda Evans. <laughs> from then, from the 90s through the 2000s, he has just released a crap ton of albums. And like I said, he's doing this thing where he does these concerts at these big venues. He'll film it, um, and he releases them. He's huge on PBS. Like, he releases a ton of his concerts public broadcast television but he's also a big supporter so but just made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of elevators it's amazing (laughs) and apparently he's the reason why john tesh exists and so i hate him a little (laughs) bit more just knowing that i don't Um, know if we should be happy about that (laughs) so yeah there there you go there's Giannis for you john i was so looking forward to this music segment for two reasons. One, that, that Vice was going to force you to learn everything about Yanni. I know you love music, and Yanni was the absolute lowest person on your to-do list to ever learn everything about, and I really appreciate that Vice forced you to learn about Yanni. Two, I only knew from Yanni, all I ever knew was like my ex-girlfriend's mom who watched him perform at the Acropolis a bunch of times, so I've seen that tape a bunch of times. And that David Tell joke where he says that he doesn't trust Yanni because he didn't trust anyone who looks like a magician that doesn't do magic. <laughs> <laughs> Which See, is another reason. Another reason why Jonathan from the Property Brothers is more interesting than Yanni. All right, let's get off this Yanni nonsense. So let's go talk about our final thoughts on this episode. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goalwiththeheat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter, at Go With The Heat. Get us on Instagram, at Go With The Heat. Get us on Facebook, at Go With The Heat. You know how to get a hold of us. We would love to hear from you. Contact us in any of those ways or more, because you can find us on even more places like Tumblr. Well, I don't know about Tumblr. They got that porno band now, so I'm going to have to take <laughs> We might not be down. there. <laughs> We would love to hear your feedback. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. In specific, we want to hear about my take on prison reform and if this was a topic that uh, you took out of this episode too. Did you have come out of there or, with a strong feeling about it? Or you could tell us your favorite Morgan J. Freeman movie. <laughs> Be sure to check out that website, go with heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. You can find all the ways to support us. Support step number one, contact us. Email us, go with heat at gmail.com. Support step number two, go to your podcast, your platform of choice, and leave us a review. Now, pals, I'm going to ask something extra special this week. We did get a review on iTunes, and it's, it was a, a, um, a good feedback. We understand that sometimes our show isn't what a Vice fan is looking for. Because we like to have a little bit of fun, and sometimes that's that advice's expense. And I can, I totally appreciate the person that was willing to write a review and say, "Hey, I was excited to see that there was a show that was going to talk about vice, but they're a little too light, poking fun at the show." I totally understand that. I totally appreciate them. But Palace, I want your help. Right now, we have a two-star rating on iTunes. We need you to go to iTunes and go give us a five-star review and bury that two-star review for us. Raise yes. that that review star rating up it helps us to help us out big time consider it a christmas gift to your pals at the go with the heat podcast go over there give us five stars support step number three check out that patreon patreon.com slash go with the heat find all the ways that you can get early access you can get a custom newsletter even a fake mustache a business card and a skinny tie because at a certain level you become our castillo that's gonna do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time bye pals Oh,